Hello guys, last time we saw the maximum absolute ratings and static characteristics of the IGBT which are very important to select an IGBT properly. This time we'll check the dynamic characteristics of the IGBT which are very dependent on the conditions that determine how we measure them. These are very helpful for switching applications and have a very crucial role which determines how fast an IGBT can switch on or off. So let's start. Just like MOSFETs, there are parasitic capacitances present inside an IGBT. If you see the simplified equivalent circuit of an IGBT, it will look like this. We can see there are capacitances between gate to emitter, gate to collector and collector to emitter. Well, we know that when we provide gate emitter voltage, the IGBT turns on. The VC decreases across the IGBT and current flows through it. We have seen MOSFETs the switching characteristics in this video along with dynamic characteristics. If you remember that video, then it will be easy to understand the IGBTs as well because it is nearly same. The combination of these parasitic capacitors make the different capacitance parameters. So the addition of the gate to collector capacitor and gate to emitter capacitor makes the input capacitance. The addition of collector to emitter capacitor and gate to collector capacitor makes the output capacitor. And gate to collector capacitor is the reverse transfer capacitance. The dynamic characteristics start with the input capacitance. This capacitance is the actual parasitic capacitance between gate and emitter. The IGBT turns on only after this input capacitor is charged fully and it turns off when the input capacitor is discharged. This capacitance value is mentioned in the datasheet with particular measuring conditions of VCE, gate to emitter voltage and switching frequency at which it is measured. When we compare this value with the MOSFET, the input capacitance value of the IGBT is usually higher than the MOSFET. This also shows that the IGBTs are slower than the MOSFETs. For the IGBT which we are referring to, it is whooping 5400 picofarad. That's too much. This IGBT is from ST Microelectronics. We'll take this IGBT as a reference. Now, the output capacitance is the actual parasitic capacitance between the collector and emitter. And after that, we have reverse transfer capacitor. These values don't make much difference when we are selecting the IGBTs, but these values should be as low as possible. To turn on an IGBT, we have to use a gate driver circuitry, which can inject the gate emitter voltage to charge the input capacitor and provide a part to discharge it as well to turn it off. The total gate charge, the gate to emitter charge and gate to collector charge are the gate charges. These show how much gate charge is required to switch the IGBT. The more the required gate charge is, the more the switching time will be, which is not good. After this, we have to look at the switching timings of the IGBT. There are different time periods which come under the dynamic characteristics of the IGBT. These are also measured under proper test conditions of the specific collector to emitter voltage, collector current, external gate driver resistor and particular gate to emitter voltage. Let's understand this concept considering the switching of the IGBT. We'll connect a load to this and provide a gate driving signal. So this will be the circuit diagram of our IGBT with the proper collector to emitter voltage, collector current, gate resistance and gate emitter voltage. We'll see how an IGBT turns on and how it turns off and what happens with VGE, collector current and collector to emitter voltage. For that, we'll divide its operation in different time durations where the IGBT turns on and it turns off. We provide gate to emitter voltage to the IGBT. The VGE rises 
and reaches 10% of its maximum magnitude. For example, if the gate to emitter voltage is 15 volts, then this value would be 1.5 volts. We'll call this time T0. This voltage increases and it charges the input capacitor of the IGBT with internal resistance of the driver circuit. When the threshold voltage of the VGA reaches, the IGBT starts conducting and its collector current increases. We'll call this time T1 when it reaches 10% of its maximum value. Now, the gate to emitter voltage reaches its maximum value. The collector current increases and collector emitter voltage decreases. At time T2, the collector to emitter voltage VCE reaches nearly zero and the collector current reaches to 90% of its value. Now at time T3, we can say that the IGBT is fully turned on. Once the IGBT is fully on, the load current flows. Um, I just recalled a not so funny joke related to IGBT. Let's consider IGBT goes for a job interview and it aced in the technical interview, but it got rejected in the HR round. Do you know why? Well, because it keeps on switching. Uh, if you understood this joke, congratulations, you learned about IGBT very well. If you didn't, we still have time. Now the time it takes for the collector current to rise from 10% to 90% of its weighted value at turn on is known as rise time, which would be around time T1 to T2. And the time it takes for collector current to reach 90% of the maximum value when the gate voltage is at 10% of its maximum value, then it is considered as turn on time. Here the time T0 to T2 is the turn on time. This is the definition of turn on time for resistive load. For inductive load, it will be different. There is no change in these parameters from time T3 to T4. Now let's see the turn off process. At time T4, we start to provide negative VGE to the IGPT. Why negative? Well, we have already talked about that in our last video. To know more about it, please click on this card above. The VG keeps on decreasing and collector current also starts decreasing. At time T5, the VG decreases up to 90% of its maximum value. At time T6, the collector current reaches to 90% of its maximum value and collector to emitter voltage starts increasing. Well, VG keeps on decreasing and reaches its final negative value at time T7 and stays constant after that. The collector current is decreasing and collector emitter voltage is increasing at this time. At time T8, the collector current reaches its 10% of the maximum value. After that, at time T9, the collector to emitter voltage of the IGBT reaches to 90% of its maximum value. And finally, at time T10, the IGBT completely turns off, where the collector current is zero and collector emitter voltage is at the maximum input voltage. Let's see the dynamic characteristics of this IGBT during the turn off period. The time when collector to emitter voltage rises from 10% of its maximum value to 90% during the turn off is called a turn off delay time. Here, this time would be from nearly T6 to T9. The time it takes for collector current to fall from 90% to 10% of its weighted value during turn off is known as fall time, which would be between time T6 to T8. The time when gate voltage reaching 90% of its maximum value and the time when collector current reaches to 10% of the maximum value is the turn off time. Again, I'm repeating, the time between gate voltage reaching 90% of its value and the time when collector current reaches to 10% of the maximum value is the turn off time of the IGBT. Here it is T5 to T8. The turn on time and turn off time part of the IGBT is little tricky, but I guess now you have understood about this. Now we also need to see the switching energy loss 
during the turn on and turn off of the IGBT. Let's check this waveforms again. The amount of energy loss during the turn on until the collector emitter voltage reaches to zero is considered as turn on switching energy. And the amount of energy lost during the turn off time until the collector emitter voltage reaches to the rated value is called as turn off switching energy. These parameters are always mentioned in the IGBT's datasheet. Well, these are the dynamic characteristics of the IGBT which we could see when there is a resistive load. Well, I've added all the references on this topic in the description. If you like my video, then hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm to promote my videos to more electronic enthusiasts like you. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the comment section or you can email me. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.